We're going to continue in our Hearing God um, section of this series in July. And last week, you can find this on YouTube. I'm going to show you guys where. But um, last week, we talked about uh, why we need to hear from God. I didn't want to assume that we all think that. And I talked about um, we need to hear from God because he knows us completely, because he loves us completely. And if someone fully knew you and fully loved you, you would always want to hear from them because you would trust what they had to say. And because God has plans and purposes for our life. And that's a true, real thing. It doesn't matter uh, if you feel like your influence is really small or you feel like your life doesn't really matter. In God's eyes, it does matter. And you do have purposes and plans that he has set in place before you even came to be. And those purposes and plans probably involve people in your life. So um, those are the things that we talked about on the why we need to hear from God. And tonight, I just want to do an overview on how we can hear from God. Uh, what are the ways that God reveals himself? And again, some of this stuff is basic, but you may hear it and be like, huh, I've always kind of heard that, but I didn't know really the background on why to believe that. And I don't know about you guys, but when I do stuff like this, it totally increases my faith. When I spend time thinking this through, I'm like, you know what, that's absolutely true. And it, it lifts my spirits and I begin to look for God in my life in different ways. You know, I, I want to be a person who has an expectation that I'm going to see um, or experience something every day that is from God. Um, and I think that scripture makes it clear that that's how he wants to engage with us. One of my favorite verses is in First Chronicles, I think it's 16, 9, and it says, the eyes of the Lord range throughout the whole earth, searching to strengthen hearts that are fully devoted to him. And I just think about like, imagine a searchlight just constantly going back and forth, looking to strengthen those hearts that are fully devoted, fully committed to him. So I believe that God actually does want to reveal himself to us um, in lots of ways, but we have to have the eyes and the faith to see that. And when I do this work, I'm kind of just preparing for you guys. It does remind me, it does increase my faith. So I want to talk about three ways like the how we can hear from God in our life okay so this is a little bit of basic theology which p.s theology is a terrible word it makes it sound like boring biology and it's awesome because it's God so um look what I made for you guys I know don't even you're just going to be blown away ready that's right, everyone. I made you a slide. I'm so excited. So, okay, we're going to talk about three things. I'm actually going to show you the scriptures on those slides. I hope you saw them. Um, so uh, hearing from God, the first way that we hear from God, how we hear from God is through what's called general revelation. So the idea of general revelation is that even if you were not ever exposed to the Bible, even if you had never really heard of God before, the heavens and earth speak of who God is. Um, not only that, but that in inside of the human heart is a moral compass that speaks to something higher than just biology, than just evolution. Um, human beings are made differently than animals. There is a conscience in a human. There is imagination. Um, there is uh, futuristic thinking. There's all of these innate things in a human that speak to something more. And that's called general revelation. So I love this passage. I'm going to show it to you guys. I hope my voice will come through when I make this transition. Um, this This is kind of a prophecy about the fact that all of creation is going to sing of the glory of God. And what that means is that when you're, I'm looking out my window right now, what that means is that when you're going out and about and you notice things in nature, that is God's handiwork. That has God's fingerprints on it. You may have heard this before, the idea of you can get to know an artist by their art and you can get to know God by his art. His, his creation is his art. So it may be things like the faithfulness of the sun rising and setting. It may be the reality of seasons changing. It may be the life and death cycle of the way that things grow. Um, it may be the way that fruit is born in season and what a tree looks like when it's not in season. All of those things speak to our creator. They speak to who he is. So if you're feeling dry, if you're feeling like scripture's not speaking to you or you're not hearing from God, you can take a walk outside or sit and observe for a while and just look at creation like it's a work of art and think about what it's telling you 
about the one who made it. Um, I've had this like running thought for the last six months probably about how wild and wildly creative nature is. Like if you just look at a little piece of nature, a piece of grass or whatever, um, just the other day there was this teeny snail, I told you guys about it, just the idea of God's wild creativity in nature um, and what that might tell us about the way that he's also wired us and the way that he's built human beings. Um, I think that there is so much more freedom and imagination and joy accessible to us as humans than we allow ourselves to feel because of fear and insecurity and anxiety and all these things that can be like chains around us. So um, God reveals himself through general revelation. That is a moral compass in you that you know is there, this sense of right and wrong. It's your imagination. It's the ability to think forward um, and to think about something like a God, but it's also the world that he created and what you see in nature. So that's called general revelation. Okay, you ready for another slide? Here's your next one. Um, okay, so the next way that we can experience God is... So it, it uses words like um, thoroughly and all. So look, everything that you read in the Bible is going to be useful for something. Everything that you read in the Bible is going to be able to teach you or rebuke you or correct you or train you up. And it's all got a purpose. And the purpose is that you would be equipped for every good work that God has for you, but not just equipped, thoroughly equipped. Like, have you ever met someone who is thoroughly equipped for something like Let's say you are hiking. Have you ever hiked with someone who is thoroughly equipped? I mean, they have everything. If you've ever like run a race or you've met like a really experienced runner who's a marathon runner, they have everything. They have everything they need for any possible situation that could go wrong. They have everything they need to stay nourished. They have everything they need in case there's an emergency. They have everything they need in a gear sort of sense. Like take that and imagine the way that you treat your Bible is that way. That God's specific revelation to you is that all of his scripture is useful for you and you can go to it and be thoroughly equipped for everything. That means whatever struggle you're facing, whatever opportunity you have, whatever anxiety is weighing you down, there is something for you in scripture that is specifically for you. It's like God is writing you a letter and he has something to say to you. And you can take that promise and say, God, I don't experience the Bible that way. If you don't feel like that's true for you, you can ask God to give you a hunger and thirst for his word. Just pray that. Pray that for a week. Pray that until next Monday. If that's not how you feel, pray that God would give you a hunger to actually pick up the Bible and to experience it and to believe that you will be thoroughly equipped for every good work. I mean, that is an awesome promise. The Bible has a lot of absolutes in it. And I just, there's not a lot of absolutes in the world. Um, there's not a lot of faithful promises that we can rely on. Um, and God is that faithful promise. He is our yes, and he is our everything, and he can meet those needs. So general revelation, the way God's revealed in scripture, specific revelation, and then the Holy Spirit, the way that the Spirit can speak to us. So I'm going to share with you guys one more verse for today, and this is actually... the Lord. Well, holy cow. We don't like it when God speaks like that, do we? It's so 
it's so stringent and strident, but you know what? It's also clarifying. It's just clear. Like that verse is so clear. It's like, hey, if you don't have wisdom about something, you can ask God for it and he will give it to you. He will give it to you generously. He will give it to you without like condemnation. He will give it to you without asking you to do anything else. But if you ask him, you have to believe that he is going to answer you. I mean, it says if you ask God and you don't expect to receive anything, you won't get anything from him. Don't expect for him to push open the doors of your doubt. You've got to open those doors. You've got to lay that out before him. And I love the reality that God makes an absolute promise that if we lack something, if we lack something in a decision, if we lack wisdom about something, he will give it to us. A lot of times where I feel like people falter in this is that they do not hang in there long enough. So it's like, hey, I asked God about that thing and I didn't get an answer. I'm like, well, how long did you ask? Was it a day or two days? Like, how persistent were you in prayer? Did you really keep bringing it before him? And I'm not talking about rehearsing a fantasy with God where you say, hey, God, this is how I could see this playing out. So if you could make that, that's all I'm talking about. I'm talking about actually asking God to meet those needs however he wants to meet them with sort of open hands and an open heart and, and persistently like hanging in there. If you don't know if you've hung in there, make a check mark on your calendar, make a note in your phone, whatever you need to do. See how long, like how passionate are you about that answer? Um, are you willing to receive the answer that is not what you want? Because God will answer you, but his answer may be no. His answer may be not now. His answer may not come with a lot of explanation, but you'll know in your heart that that's what he's told you. Um, so when you come to God, you've got to clear that stuff up when you come to God. Does that make sense to you guys? Does that help? Um, and I know that some of you are like thinking of a scenario right now that you're feeling really frustrated by. And if you want to send me a question and you want me to try to answer it next week, I will, because I know when I say these kind of things, all kinds of things go through your mind, but I just know scripture to be true. And I know that this verse is really accurate. And this verse says, if you lack wisdom and you ask God, he will give it to you. It says you have to believe and not doubt. You can't be double-minded about God answering, which also kind of to me implies that you're going to be obedient to his answer. I mean, that's kind of what it means. I think sometimes we stop praying because we don't want the no. We don't want the not now. Um, so we just say, oh, well, God doesn't answer me. He's distant. Well, are you sure? So hang in there. Um